the tools that we need to install the SageX3 services for ADC and GraphQL services are basically um, the latest version of SageX3 and you'll need to have purchased the badges for the new ADC module. And to make sure that you have the badges, you need to go to administration and under licenses, click on license data and click on your license line and scroll down to the badges section. You'll need to make sure that you've got at least one of these badges purchased and added your license. As you can see, I have ADC all, which is distribution and manufacturing badge, five of them. I've got ADC distribution and ADC manufacturing, uh, five of each. So you'll need to make sure that you have the right license. And the second step you need to do is you need to assign one or all of these badges to your user account, which is going to log into SageX3's web services ADC module. So I'm going to go and assign this to my admin user. Um, click on my admin. Uh, user or another user, uh, any other user that you'd like to add. Click on the groups here and click on the role. So this role will be assigned to that badge. So if you click on that action button and click edit, and in the badges section, I'll need to click this plus button here and say I'm assigning ADC all to this. So I'm clicking OK and I'm clicking save. So this is the first step that you need to do in SageX3. You can log out of him here. Another thing that you'll need to check that you have in place is configuration of your SQL server to support external connectivity. So let's go to start menu and type in SQL server configuration manager. So you need to go to this application and click on yes on that. Then go to SQL services and make sure this service called SQL Server Browser is running and it's enabled. If it is not running or it's disabled, you'll need to right click on it, go to properties and go to the service tab. And in here, make the start mode automatic from manual or disabled. So make that automatic, click on OK, and then come here and right click on it and uh, start it. So make sure that this service is running. The second thing you'll need to do is you need to go to SQL Server Network Configuration and double click on protocols for your instance name. And you'll need to make sure that this TCP IP protocol name is enabled. If it's not enabled, you need to right click on it and click enable. And go to properties after that, go to IP addresses. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll need to have a number, a port number in the TCP dynamic ports field. If it is blank, you'll need to give it a port number. Uh, for me, I'm using 49712. Feel free to use that as well. This is the default dynamic port for SQL, but you can use any other port as long as it's free. So you'll need to have that as well. And when you click OK, you'll need to go back to SQL services and right click on your SQL server instance name and restart that. So this is to make sure that all these changes have been applied to your SQL instance. The next step you need to do is going to the Sage X3 installation media and go to the X3 installs folder. And under that, you've got a folder here called X3 services. So double click on that. There's a zip file in there. Copy that and bring it to your uh, D drive, preferably, where you install SageX3. So go there, go inside the Sage folder where you install the rest of the Sage components and paste that zip file here. Now you can right click on that and extract all. Now when the extraction is finished, you can delete the zip file, go inside the extracted folder and you can see there is all these files in there. I highly recommend that you rename this folder to a simple thing like x3-services to get rid of versions, but it's up to you to do that. And when I go inside x3-services, first thing we need to do is there is this file in here called xtrmsecurity-yml. If you right click on that and open it with, say, a text editor, there is a 
couple of things that I need to fill up in here. So there's a client ID and there's a secret. So this client ID needs to be a UI ID, a number. You need to generate that uh, using a UI ID tool on the internet. So go to your uh, favorite search engine and search for UI ID generator and go to this website called UIITgenerator.net. So if you go in there, then you can generate a version one UI ID. So just click on this button. It will give you a number up here. So just copy that, go back to your notepad and paste that code in between these double codes. And you need to also generate a secret, which is a password. It needs to be at least 20 characters long. So go to a password generator website. And so go to your search engine again and search for password generator and click on a random password generator link, or I could use LastPass or your password generator application. So choose the password length to be at least 20 characters. And I would remove the symbols because sometimes symbols cause issues and I'm going to generate. And you can copy any of these passwords and in this tool, I can just copy the first line and go back to that file and paste that here. So I put my password in there and I save that. So do the same thing here. So copy this and paste it here. and copy this and paste it here and save this file. So you'll later need to copy this section um, which is called Etna into node local. We'll get to that pretty quickly. So let's go to Syracuse installation directory where Syracuse installed, go to Syracuse, then go to bin and under bin, there is a node local file. Right click on that and click edit. Now there's a couple of things that you need to do in the Syracuse file. So while you have that other file, extreme security will will open, in the node local file, you'll need to add the bearer type to your authentication type. So where under session, you see there is an auth section and there is only a basic in there. Put a square bracket open uh, before basic, put a comma after the code sign of basic, put a double code in there, and in between the codes, type in bearer. And close the square brackets. The other thing you need to do is you need to add this Etna section. You can add this at the end of your node local. So I'm going to copy that. and paste it after extra fusion. And remove this marks for comments. Each of these sections need to end with a comma. When we added the Etna at the end, we did not add a comma to the extra fusion section. So I'm gonna add a comma there and save this. So again, because it doesn't have the permissions, it needs to save to my desktop, that's fine. I'll save it there, replace it, and then um, copy it from my desktop and drop it into my D drive, Sage, Syracuse bin here and replace the file. Okay, so done. Now I try to start a circuit service and it should start successfully. So I refresh the page just to make sure it's still in a running stage. Go up and try to browse to your local host 8124 or whatever port you chose to install Syracuse and wait for this um, process to start. So I'm going to keep refreshing my browser. I'm going to close all these tabs just to clean things up. Keep refreshing until we get 
the Syracuse login screen. And while this is running, we need to make sure that we do have a username in our SQL database, which has full read and write access to our folder. Usually that username is automatically generated for you uh, when you import it or created your folder. And the username of that um, account is the folder name. And the password is basically the password that you chose in this parameter when you were um, configuring your solution for the first time. So this password for X3 folder schemas is basically the password for logging into those um, specific folder usernames. So just to test this, if you go to um, SQL Management Studio and click a new connection, since I'm connecting my X3 services to my seed folder, uh, the system has already generated this username for me. And if I type in the password that I have entered in the console previously, I should be able to log in, right? So it logs into my um, SQL. So I need to give this username and password to Syracuse shortly. Just going back to Syracuse, see if it has already started. Yes, it has. So sign in in there. Great. So if I go to administration, and under here there is a button under endpoints called MS SQL Service. So go there and click on the actions and click the create a MS SQL service and give it a name. So I'm going to give it like um, ADC seed and the instance name in my database is basically the name of the instance which I need to copy from here. So this is my database instance with the service name. So database name is the name of your database. So if you don't remember what it was, log into SQL, go to databases and find which database includes your Sage X3 table. So I'm going to go and put in the X3DB in there. You, could have, you can also get this database name out of your console in this parameter database name. And the username is the folder name and the password is the password which you entered here. So I'm going to enter that password. I'm going to click save. The next thing I need to do is going and installing the web services. So let's log out of X3. And let's go into where we installed the, or we copied the Sage X3 services. Go back to G drive, go to Sage, and go to Sage X3, X3 services folder. And in here, go to file, go to open PowerShell, and open a PowerShell as an administrator. So once that is open, um, run this command just to make sure that we uninstall any previously installed services because whenever you are upgrading uh, to a new version, you need to uninstall the previous version first. So just put in dot backslash uninstall. You're basically just calling the file name dash ps1. So this is the file that I'm calling. I'm just bring that up again for you. So this is the file that I'm running uninstall that ps1 and i just press enter there it will just look into uh, my services so make sure you close the services window as well if you have opened it and it just basically uninstalls the service if it couldn't find anything it will just tell you that it couldn't find anything which is a good thing so now if i do the opposite and just say install so i'm just going to uh, put a dot backslash install that ps1 I'm going to run the other file which is the install script this file I'm going to press OK there so this one will come with two messages called install complete and start service complete so just to make sure that we have actually installed it successfully you can uh, call it from PowerShell, so you can just say invoke 
dash web request. So this is just PowerShell's command to connect to a web service and call HTTP slash slash local host and the port by default is 8240 and with a slash in there and say ping and press the enter so you should get a 200 message called OK in there this means that the service is already running and you're ready to go perfect the next step to do is go back into SageX3 and we need to update our solution details. So go to administration and go to X3 solutions. Click on the pencil button next to your X3 solution. If you scroll further down, you will see in here that it says Sage X3 services URL. So in here, Type in HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon or port A240. This is the port for the web services. And it's SQL services to SQL Server. And in here, choose the SQL Server which we just created. So called ADC seed. So I'm going to click on Actions and click on Save. The next thing I need to do is I need to create a uh, classic soap pool. So go to Administration, go to Classic Soap Pool Configuration, and create a soap pool for your folder. So create a soap pool here, Action and New Soap Pool. For Elias, give it your folder name, tick the order start, endpoint, choose your folder. For the locale, you know, use your preferred locale. I'm going to use English United States. And I can for maximum size, say for example, two. Initial license size is one, and I give it a lifetime. So these parameters are entirely dependent on what kind of load you want to put on this. Um, um, and you need to choose a user. So I'm going to choose my admin user. And click on Save. Now I can click on Actions and click Start. Log out of X3. In the browser URL or address bar, Right after our localhost A124, put a slash in there and say handheld and enter. You'll basically get the same login window, but if you look closer up there, you can say that handheld equals to true. So you can basically bookmark this URL and put it on anywhere on your desktop or anywhere else. So whenever you want to access the ADC web pages from your desktop, you can just call this URL. Uh, and usually when you want to use ADC from a handheld device, you need to browse to this URL. So I'm going to log in. And as soon as I'm logged in, I will be seeing these options, which are basically my ADC device touch-friendly options on SageX3.